Hello everyone, thank you for joining us to this symposium. On this day, we will discuss about the credibility and the field verification approach on restoration projects. My name is Hernan Saldivar, I'm the specialist of ecosystem restoration in Preferred by Nature. I'm talking to you from Lima, Peru, and today I'm joined with Richard Donovan, who will join us at the final of the presentation. Preferred by Nature is an NGO funded in Denmark in the 1994, we work with businesses, NGOs, and governments on developing solutions to major global challenges such as deforestation and climate change. Now, let me start with some background about the ecosystem restoration. Why we talk about restoration, or why it is important to talk about restoration, is important because it is needed to consider that we live in a limited world and that the common goal behind of the humanity is intimately linked to maintain the healthy ecosystem functions. When we talk about the ecosystem restoration, we need to talk about the UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration. The UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration is a rally call for the protection and revival of ecosystems around the world, for the benefit of people and nature. It's aimed to halt the degradation of ecosystems and restore them to achieve the goals, the global goals. Only with healthy ecosystems can we enhance people's livelihoods, counteract climate change, and stop the collapse of biodiversity. The restoration of ecosystems is linked to the restoration of human health. The COVID-19 pandemic, which has so far caused over a million deaths worldwide, is a poignant reminder of how ecosystem degradation and contribute to the emergence and the spread of these novel pathogens. To combat these emerging global conditions and protect the life of future generations, we need to protect and restore our habitats and biodiversity. Also, it's important to mention the global communities. One of the most important is the Bond Challenge, which aims to restore 350 million of hectares by the 2030. At the regional level, we have also commitments. We have the 20 by 20 initiative in Latin America and the FRR 100 initiative in Africa. Both are regional alliances to seek to bring more than 150 million hectares of the gradual land to conservation and restoration by the 20 by 30. It's also important to know that the conservation, restoration, and improved forest management are the cost-effective solution for large-scale reductions of greenhouse emissions and removal of carbon of the atmosphere and thus help to hold the global temperatures increase below the pre-industrial levels. In addition to this climate change mitigation potential, forest conservation and restoration also helps to countries and communities to adapt to climate change. For example, forest products provide livelihoods to millions, mangrove protect coastals against the rising sea levels, and inland forests moderate the temperature fluctuations and stability the water supply. In the same page, the National Determinate Contribution, the, the NDC, that the countries have communicated to the United Nations Framework to Conservation of the Climate Change, often to do not have full use of this potential of forest solution or lack the need specifically, which could result in missing substantial opportunities to reduce the greenhouse emissions in cost-effective ways. The ecosystem restoration is also a good means. The WRI mentions that the restoring a degraded forest generates between seven and thirty dollars in economic economic benefits for every dollar invested. So we see that restore the ecosystems, restore forests is not only uh, uh, environmental uh, good business; it's also economic good business. Now. We want to start to talk about the ecosystem restoration standard by preferred by nature. The objective of the, this new standard 
is assess the implementation of the ecosystem restoration activities at the build level. This is standard now in the version 3.1 uh, look to start uh, and the assess this uh, assess the development of the activities of restoration at the build level because we have had numerous frameworks or foundational documents where layouts the key aspects, principles or elements of the restoration whether driven by ecological, economical and social concern. This document, uh, the standard of preferred by nature, provide, provides a practical standard for field verification of performance and implementing, implementing ecosystem restoration where the restoration is technically, environmentally, socially and economically appropriate. This standard was designed to audit the performance of at any scale of projects and any time point in the ongoing restoration projects or projects in tropical, temperate and boreal biomes. The Somali projects are considered those restoring fewer than 100 hectares, either in, proper, in a single property or a multiple location property, like a group project. Large projects are defined as the design between a greater map of 10,100 hectares and medium are the projects between these two types of projects. Projects managed by communities are also grouped with small projects and together referred to smallholder and community projects. The ecosystem restoration may include use of techniques such as management of natural forests, grazing management, agroforestry, conservation, agriculture, tree planting, reforestation or disparatory management, reducing vital logging, rewilding, etc. Pure priority is placed on use of native species, but also allowing the use of alien species where the such species provide nursing or similar qualities, leading towards the re-establishment of natural forest cover on ecosystem functions. The standard can be used for first party, second party, or third party evaluation or audits of performance. The actor threshold for large and smaller operations may be adjusted based on the geography or the corresponding size limits. There is a scientific evidence connecting more effective forest stewardship with indigenous traditional people and local communities. We usually attribute the, to the activity participation on forest governance their, their, their benefits from forest products and their desire to maintain the resource for future generations. The proposed approach is created a series of core and continuous improvement in indicators. Core indicators means those which as shall be assessed and verified in every situation with positive performance at the field level to consider crucial to require in all the cases. Continuous improvement indicators means the partial success in the implementation is acceptable if credible field level is produced is evident. And there are multiple options for audit signal, like you see it in, in, the, in the screen. Depending on the scale and the risk of the restoration initiative. The typically independent audit cycle is a five year, starting with the first verification audit, prior to independent third party audits, a self assessment is strongly suggested to inform the action plan which is required to the first verification in the year one to determine the continuous improvement approach. Timing for the first third party independent audit is optional. Usually we suggest they take place after some five activities we occur. Periodic audits and after it may happen or on annual or multi-year basis based on the scale, risk or investor supported needs. Five years after the first audit, the re-verification or re-verification audit is required if the independent approval and related public communication by preferred by nature are requested. All indicators in the standard are checked at the first verification. However, 
only the core indicators need be to meet for obtaining the restoration performance certificate at the first time. Indicators are certified based on the specific project circumstances and performance per standard. The table, what you see in the, in the screen, presents the minimum audit requires. The NCRs are identified by the auditors when the field performance does not fully met indicators in the standard. The ecosystem restoration standard, by performing nature, has uh, four sections. Uh, the first one is the planification, and the second one is tenure, right, and engagement. We have five indicators. The third is uh, implementation. We have uh, 17 indicators. And the final section of the standard is the monitoring of the outcomes. We have six indicators. Now, we're going to start with as, as a very small debrief of these stations of the standards. The planification, and one of the most important things when we talk about the planification is the landscape context. Uh, the restoration manager shall undertake analysis of the landscape in which restoration is occurring using local information or relevant, relevant application approaches. We can use uh, the ROM, we can use the HCBC to, to identify where is the baseline condition and land use of the ecosystem or which restoration area may be part. This baseline need to include where is the environmental conditions, what is the social conditions. In this part, uh, most very important is to assess if in the area we have the presence of indigenous people community watershed areas, cultural heritage sites, etc. In this baseline also it's important to to mention what is the threat of the degradation or what is the drivers of degradation. What or where are or which are the function the ecological or ecological functional relationship to either adjacent or nearby protected area if it is the case. It's important to know if we have or not affected the stakeholder or right holders to be consulted during the planning, implementation, and the monitoring. Customary use rights and the other tenure rights by people, local people, indigenous or otherwise, for example, uh, the, the use of water supply areas, etc. Very important to assess the traditional knowledge systems or practices related to restoration and potential inclusion during the planning, implementation, and monitoring. Finally, one of the most important things when we talk about the, the landscape context is, is we need to refer the suitable native reference sites to provide a target values to establish recovery metrics in the restoration sites. Continue with the planification any restoration project shall to have a restoration plan. This plan need be aligned to effectively reverse the degradation conditions and recognize, manage, or restore the characteristics of the value and value of the identified, uh, identified in, the, in the previous uh, part of the restoration. This uh, plan and need to be identified target using both reference ecosystem and environmental, social, and economic goals, included the desired restoration outcomes over an, an initial period of five years and longer term, for example, 20 years. In our case, uh, we always um, looking for a projects with at least 20 years of period. When it's applicable, describe what is the plan selection. This is important part, uh, part of the restoration plan. It's describing what is the plan selection process. We need to, to see what is the species, what is the genotypes and densities where will match to climate soils, water ability, and with clear consideration given to climate change resilience. 
it's important to note if you take uh, some species in consideration what is the best another risk uh, can be a problem at, at the future of the project of the restoration project it's important that this restoration plan be documented and right is mm, one of the most important uh, problems we I see in, in the past in the restoration project uh, restoration projects is we don't have a, a restoration plan or we have some general idea of what is the restoration plan but sometimes we don't have a writing documented uh, restoration plan and finally the restoration plan need include a continuation strategy in order to uh, to achieve this uh, sustainable restoration project. The second part of the of the second stage of the standard is the part of the tenure right and engagement. The mo one of the most important part of this uh, of most the important indicators of this part of the standard is the stakeholder engagement. The restoration manager shall use culturally sensitive engagement talking into consideration the social and economic dynamics, including gender, age, and other power dynamics, to ensure that affected stakeholders are transparently and effectively consulted and engaged with an inclusive manner in the restoration planning, implementation, and monitoring, and aware of the expected actions and benefits. The restoration manager shall support transparent and inclusive participation of the affected parties when making decisions on actions that will have impact on clear implication on the landscape beyond the project boundaries. The relevant parties of the engagement process should be documented, including all the agreements, all the commitments of the resources, labors, and responsibility for action by all involved individuals and parties organizations in the restoration project. The third part is the implementation. In the implementation section, uh, um, for, um, and this is the most important part and the most robust part of the standard, uh, we believe the social aspects will be one of the most important things when we develop and we assess our ecosystem restoration projects. It's important to mention where is the where is the action taken about the local labor where the implementation prioritizes the use of local, the local labor or contractors with alternative labor options possible if they are subject to control to ensure that they not undermine the employment opportunities for local communities. It's important always assess in the restoration project uh, that the work gets the worker rights. It's important to assess that in the, this uh, restoration or any restoration project, uh, the project not include child, child labor, don't have a forced or compulsory, compulsory labor. All the workers in the in the restoration projects have the right to organize, have the freedom of association and collective a collective bargain. Is banning all kind of discrimination. It's important to have an equal remuneration and not abuse practices or unusual disciplinary procedures. Legal and decent working hours is a must in every project of restoration. Of course, uh, the working conditions need be uh, need be uh, achieved by the restoration manager. And all the conditions of health and safety for the workers involved in the restoration project need to be achieved. Of course, finally, the workers' remuneration of the of all the workers in the, in the restoration project need to be adjusted to the national or subnational levels and need to be uh, need to be, need to be achieved. Finally. Planting seedlings, this is the final part of the, of the standard, we are talking about the monitoring, and the monitoring of the standard 
and uh, I, I think or we think it, this is a, one of our strengths in the in this for this standard and because we see we have some good projects in, in our work but we see some lack of, of of monitoring outcomes for that we develop uh, a couple of uh, indicators in the monitoring part and one of the two most important is monitoring the outcomes of the project and the, where is the adaptive, adaptive, adaptive management sorry, of the project. In the first part of the monitoring of the outcomes, for example, plantings and seedings of na or natural regenerations need to be monitored annually, including survival rates, where is the health of the, of the species, and technically sound fashion, uh, including practical, consistent, and transparent, uh, replicable, and repeatable actions to take in continuation improvement based on monitoring outcomes evident at the field level. When we talk about the adaptive management, the monitoring results are compiled, compiled annually and used to enhance achieve, achievement of the restoration targets, goals, and objectives. This, uh, this compilation of the results used uh, to uh, improve the projects in this adaptive management of the project. What is important? What is for the this this standard to use? Because this standard assesses whether the inconsistent restoration actions are aligned with the objective of the project of program. This standard. Uh, can get the project improvement point point in point improve point pointed and can just to communicate possibly the restoration actions can be carried out to the interested parties. This is a a very very short uh, presentation about the standard. And uh, now I leave you with a, a final comments by Richard in this uh, about this. Uh, the, the, this subject. Thank you. Hey there, this is Richard Donovan, Independent Forest Advisor, and I've been working with Hernan Zaldivar and Mateo Carino and others at Preferred by Nature over the last three years on the verification standard for restoration, ecosystem restoration, that Hernan has just presented to you. Um, it has been a very interesting process. We've gone through multiple drafts. We've sought input from all of the restoration initiatives that we could communicate with, as many as were practical. We've done field tests, as Hernan has probably explained, in temperate and tropical regions, multiple countries. The emphasis of the standard has always been on the practical aspects. So we've been lucky in that uh, we have a lot of people that have been open to testing the standard because they were thinking about their own monitoring, reporting, and verification systems. The results of those field tests have been very positive in general. People feel that the language in the standard is fairly direct and written in language that practitioners understand. We've tried to be practical throughout. We've tried to be open-minded as to what type of restoration intervention you might use this standard to work with. So we've made sure to include the key elements of planning, tenure rights, customary and indigenous, engagement with both rights holders and sta other stakeholders, particularly those directly affected. We've worked on implementation of key concepts like high conservation values or rare threatened endangered species, free prior and informed consent on the social side, as well as, of course, the landscape or ecological context in which the restoration is happening. And finally, something that we place emphasis on is trying to put, in, put indicators in there that cover aspects of monitoring and adaptive management. Ultimately, our goal is that these be durable certification, durable restorations, Maybe they'll be certified in the future under some system, but our primary emphasis has been for first, second, and third party reporting of all kinds. 
so that the main thing is that there's a way of being accountable and reporting with accuracy. We've been very open to all the kinds of different systems that are out there for restoration, as I mentioned before, with an emphasis, yes, on tree planting when that's appropriate, but also things like agroforestry, rewilding, assisted natural regeneration and regeneration, and ecosystem management. We don't expect any standard will be perfect, but we hope that you'll find this one useful and look forward to working with you in any way we can to help you with your efforts going forward on restoration globally. Let's make this UN Decade restoration successful. Thank you.